Hi, I'm Professor Lumen from the Computer Science Department at Allegheny College. In this video, we're going to look at two things. First, a platform called GitHub, and second, something called an SSH key. We're going to use both of those in this video. Now, this one builds on Professor Caphammer's video on terminal commands. So if you haven't watched that, or you're unfamiliar with what I mean when I say the word terminal, you might want to head over and check that out. Number two, you're going to need to have an active GitHub account. So if you don't have one of those, pause this video, go set one up at github.com, and then resume where you left off. You might be wondering, what is GitHub and why would I use it? Well, you can think of GitHub as a kind of social network minus the majority of the annoying parts. You're not going to be flooded with pictures of everybody's lunch, but you are going to have access to an amazing amount of code in addition to your assignments. You're also going to interact with your professors through the platform and submit code using it. Now, we do submit in a bit of a different way than you normally might on Google Drive or another website. We actually push our code to GitHub, as you will see in Professor Mohan's video, using our terminal. So that's why we're creating an SSH key today, so that we can save ourselves some steps and securely send all of our code from our computer up to our GitHub. An equally, if not more important question is, what is an SSH key? Well, simply, it's a way to authenticate. And when I say the word authenticate, most folks think of, well, usernames and passwords. Frankly, usernames and passwords are the weakest way that we have to authenticate on the modern web. Let's face it, how many of you use the word password or the number 1234 as a password for any of your platforms? You don't have to raise your hand. I can see you. SSH keys are designed to fix some of the problems with passwords due to two main features. First, the keys are split in half, and they're called asymmetric keys because they have a public half and a private half. And neither of them are the same. And you give the public half of the key out to any platform that you want to use it with, including GitHub. That's a good example. The second is the private key that you're going to keep on your machine. So unless someone has that private key and logs into a service that has the public key and they interact, you're not really going to be able to authenticate with it. Number two, these keys are not human readable. And while it is a good time to try to find English words in the keys, you're more than likely not going to be able to actually read any parts of them. In fact, no one can. And that's part of the secret. They are encrypted so that they're not human readable and no one can figure out the content. So let's go ahead and generate one of those keys. This is the part of the exercise where you're going to need a terminal. Again, if you're unfamiliar with what I mean when I say terminal, go check out Professor Caphammer's video on basic terminal commands to gain some familiarity with what a terminal is and how you might get around in one. But if you are ready and have your terminal open, if you don't, go ahead and pop it open. You'll see that I have my terminal up behind me. It's a little different than the one that you might use, but the commands should be the same. Now notice I'm just right here in my home directory and you can tell by the little squiggly in my command prompt, so I am ready to go. I'm going to use a program called SSH keygen, descriptive, to generate my SSH key. So at the prompt, go ahead and type SSH dash keygen and a space. Because we're going to provide some options that we call flags after our program so that we can make our key just a little bit stronger and provide some details. Now, I'm not going to go into detail about each of these flags. I'm just going to tell you briefly what they do. So go ahead and follow along. And the first flag that we're going to use here is minus T for type, and then a space after that. So anytime you type a flag, it's minus the flag, so minus T, and then space for a parameter or for something to give that particular flag, an option to specify. And in this case, we're going to say that we want our key to be an RSA key, which is just an encryption algorithm. Then a space after that, and the next flag, minus B. We're going to use 4096 bytes of encryption just to make our key that much stronger. Now this last flag, space minus capital C, capitalization and spelling count here, minus capital C, a space, and then in quotes, your Allegheny email address. Because like everything at the college here, we're going to use this email address to identify with both your GitHub account and when you're pushing things to GitHub, as you're going to see in Professor Mohan's video. So make sure you've spelled your email address inside those quotes just right. Your command should look like this. So if you've got your key squared away, it looks right, go ahead and hit the enter key 
and the program is going to tell you it's generating that public private key pair. Again, SSH keys are asymmetric keys, so you get two for the price of one. The first action that the program is going to expect you to take is to find a place to put it. Now it's helpful. The program provides an automatic default location for our key. And actually, the location that it supplies is one that most programs use to find the key. So we're fine with where it's going to end up on our hard drive. And at this particular prompt, we can just hit enter and not specify anything else. However, the program is going to ask us to use a password for our key. Now, mea culpa, I know that what I said about passwords wasn't exactly flattering. However, you could think of passwords here as the final layer. Again, someone has to be at your machine, has to know your password to be able to use your key. So this is just one sort of extra step that you can use to secure your key. Now, before you start typing a password, you're going to notice that when you start typing, you're not going to see any characters on the screen. This is a feature, not a bug. The program is going to ask you to put your password in again so that you can verify that you put the correct password in twice before it saves the key. Now we recommend you give a strong password to your key. The prompt obviously says you can have an empty passphrase. We don't recommend that. We always recommend that extra level of security for you to be able to use the key. So I'm going to give mine a strong password. Type it once and then type it again to confirm. And the key is generated. You're going to get some wonderful ASCII art, but it has been placed in the directory that the program specified, that .ssh directory. Now, in order to get the key out of our computer and into GitHub, we're going to have to actually print it out to the screen and copy it. In order to do that, we're going to use a different command. I'm going to clear my screen really quickly just so that it doesn't hide behind me on the screen here. So I'm going to clear my screen, and I'm going to use a new command that you may or may not have seen before called cat. And I know what you're thinking, it's 2020, and that means anytime you type the word cat in a computer, there should be an explosion of cats on the screen, and it, that would be lovely, and while I would love that to be the case, while I would love that to be the case, that's not what cat does. Cat essentially outputs the contents of a file to the screen. So I'm going to type cat as my command in a space, and locate my key, again, using my home directory, the squiggly, then slash dot SSH and ID underscore RSA dot pub, the pub standing for public. So I'm looking for that half of the key. The other file ID underscore RSA with no extension is the private key. Again, we want to keep that one secret, but we can output the contents of the public key to our screen so that we can copy it. I'm going to go ahead and do that. And as you can see, there's nothing human readable here. It, might be tons of fun to try to find words here. You're probably not going to find too many, if any at all. But this is what our public key looks like. In order to get it out of our computer again, we have to copy it. And I'm just going to click and drag over the entire contents all the way down to the end of my email address there and right click. You may have to click copy. For me, my terminal automatically copies when I click with the right mouse button. So now we're going to head over to GitHub and put it in our account. Once you've copied your key, open github.com in your web browser. If you don't have it open right now, pause this video, pop up a web browser, and log into your github.com account, and then resume where you left off. But if you already have github.com open, open up your web browser, and you'll notice that in the upper right-hand corner of the screen, you'll see a small version of your profile picture and a down arrow, which indicates that there's a menu there, and that's the menu we're interested in. We're looking for the settings option, which is down near the bottom of that menu. So once you find settings, click it, and guide your attention to the left-hand side of the screen. There are a number of sub-menus there. We're looking for one labeled SSH and GPG keys. So once you scroll down a little bit, you'll find it. SSH and GPG keys, click it. And this is the portion of the site where we can put in the key that we just copied from our terminal. Find the new SSH key button, click it, and you will have the opportunity to give your key a name and specify the key. Now in the title field, give your key a descriptive name. Some folks use the name of their computer. Like for me, if I were doing that, it'd be Professor Lumen's Windows PC. But I'm gonna give it a bit of a different name. I'm gonna call it Allegheny CS2. And in the key field, I'm going to copy and paste 
the key that I just took out of the terminal. Click add SSH key, and you should have it added to your list of keys. Now I have some other keys there. I have another key for Allegheny. I have a key for an organization that I work on, but you should now have one key listed there. And that's it for generating an SSH key and adding it to your GitHub account. If you have questions, feel free to ask your instructors. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in a future video.